Hello. Ben was uh, on holiday this week, so I'm gonna do this one. So basically what happened. And I soldered every joint, not all week. I know a bit about boilers. I know a bit about solar panels. I've worked on heatable videos for just long enough that I can now confidently tell you the difference between a low cost energy tariff and a Tesco meal deal. Now, all that's to say that I'm quite happy with my level of knowledge in this sort of general area, you know, batteries, boilers, solar panels, and the works. And then there's Roger. You need to know what you're doing per day. So I'd have a different profile for each month. Give me those numbers in a CSV. And I've got some spreadsheets where I've been doing all that. I get them in a CSV and then write a script. I can read this data. I'll show you the Excel upstairs that I've got. I'm then writing every one of those values by hand. It's my, it's my Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> Roger is a man of many talents. He is a programmer. He is a family man. He is a dedicated servant to the big mouse in the big clubhouse. But when it comes to his home energy system, I feel like he's got us all beat. Do you want to what about this net zero? Mine's, yeah. net, mine's yeah. net zero from my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> if you take the EV charger out, I think the end phase stuff and the battery, the give energy, the gateway, and then there was a little bit extra to put it on the grid. I think it was about 17 grand. And I think obviously with you doing the case study, you've come in quite cheap with the heat pump side. So that was about, was that about four and a half after the, after bus scheme came off. So I think, yeah, it's just over 20 grand, which yeah. is awesome really if you think about it. As a repeat customer to Heatable, we were thrilled when Roger came to us and asked us for one thing and one thing only, to help him get one step closer to true off-grid living with the new Valent Aerotherm 7 kilowatt heat pump. But to give a brief explanation, a heat pump basically replaces your boiler and cuts off your gas. It's basically, it's basically a much more self-sufficient solution to heating your house. But as well, it's like a huge step. You know, you're cutting off your gas. And even Roger was quite hesitant at first. I mean, if it's installed or if it's specified incorrectly, then you could end up with a, a quite sizable hole in your pocket. However, with his REA Fusion 2 solar PV on the roof and his Give Energy all-in-one battery system, we felt that it was a perfect ecosystem for the heat pump installation. And so we went, we went through with it. And so the crew got their stuff together and headed over to the site of the install. I'm sorry, it's so warm. I was gonna, I was trying to stay on brand with the heatable, the heatable hoodie, but I'm sweating me gonads off. I'm sorry. Yeah. Okay, so the first day was a little bit quiet, expected, but that didn't make an ounce of difference to Roger. Roger was brimming and simmering with enthusiasm. <laughs> we like Roger. He's a man who knows what he wants, and what he wants is that sexy little heat pump. I've sort of worked out that hopefully by the end of the year, I will have no fuel bills whatsoever and I'll actually be in pocket. It don't work for everybody. Yeah. It doesn't work for everybody, I get that. And some people's payback only two or three, there's about four or five years, and some are eight, and eight nine, 10 years. Yeah. But if you if you do your specs right and go through the calculations, it can work really, really well. Yeah, it it's all about putting me in the right place, doing your own calculations, doing your own homework. Don't just, again, I know you're really, really good, but don't just take your advice. You, like, you yeah. said, like you said before, you know your own routines, whether you work, where you've got kids at home and all, you, your lifestyle, how it's going to work. Electric cars, electric cars. Yeah. So you've gone with the Give Energy, which is a 13 and a half kilowatt, but all in one unit. Yeah. The M phase ones aren't great because you need one battery per five kilowatt. Yeah, that's right. So you've got it all in one place. And even though it is one battery, it's actually four separate batteries. Yeah. Um, so it's easy if, if one does degrade a little bit, you can just swap one battery out a little bit. Yeah. And, and I know they're not quite there, I know that when they said, Give said that they eventually can add six modules on. Yeah. But they are, and that's the idea, to add the second. Yeah. So with the heat pump, it might be that I need the tw at least 20 kilowatts yeah. for the batteries. I so probably won't know till winter. Once winter comes along, then I'll probably sort of know. Yeah. Because nobody can give me an exact how much it's going to 
utilized yeah. and it's until you do your own profile of what your usage is going to be yeah and i've got some spreadsheets where i've been doing all that and <laughs> everything's a spreadsheet i know a spreadsheet for everything <laughs> well it'll be good to, is the heat going to the back here yeah it's going to the back just what i say can i have your autograph <laughs> brought the princess pen out and everything oh don't you feel special i was born special yeah Now, before we carry on, I think there's something really important that we consider. I quite respect the way that Roger does things, and maybe later in this video, you'll see me try to tackle spreadsheets in the same way he does. That being said, it's not really something that everyone can or even wants to do. It can be satisfying to take time to organize some things in your life, like sorting your spice rack from soothing tingle to blow your cock off. But sometimes, you know, life gets in the way. We're busy, busy people. But if you're thinking of buying with Heatable, we actually do provide you with a ton of support and resources to really get an idea of what is happening in your house with your energy system, not just like if there's a burglar or, yeah. But we'll talk more about those resources and stuff in a bit. But for now, the sun is shining, the sky is clear. And for this install, it was only up from here. I need a holiday. At the very least though, things were finally moving along and the lads from Valent even came over to check out this meaty, meaty install. If anyone knows a solid heat pump when they see one, it's these lads. Have you guys got heat pumps? No, not in my house, no. Yeah, sadly, <laughs> Sounds not. really bad, that doesn't yeah, I've, I've, I've got a violent like... boiler. I've got a violent boiler. Of course, of course. Perks <laughs> of the job. Theoretically, they're the best. So apparently this is quite small for a heat pump. This is probably an average size. It, well, this is slap bang in the middle of our range, isn't it? Yeah. Right, okay. 7 kW is probably an average heat pump for most properties. What? It's got good insulation rocks, so yeah. it's got good windows. Once you put solar on the roof, you're using using the energy and thinking right okay what else can i power with it if i'm charging my car great or if i can charge the rest of the heating yeah and heat your home with it now well, we didn't actually get any footage of them saying exactly that right. valent were really impressed with the install they, they thought it was really neat it's a good one in fact they were so pleased that they even brought out the big man himself ceo coo chief chairman of the executive carrot organizing department valent the rabbit so or is it a hair can you not? So with day two having come and gone, the engineers remained hard at work with the wiring and the piping systems and whatever else men in high-vis jackets do. The heatable video department also remained hard at work at staying as moist as humanly possible throughout the entire duration of the day. I don't know if you do it. Does it pump out fire? I'm the wrong person to ask, do I? I think it sucks in I don't know. Actually, I, that's blowing up something. <laughs> yeah, I'm not even ready for that. Probably. Now, as we mentioned before, Roger has a very particular set of skills. Skills that he has acquired over a very long career. Skills that make it a nightmare for anyone looking to swindle him out of some very good savings. I know I've not quite finished the, the heat pump yet, yeah. but the hot water was on last night, so went for a shower this morning, had a look, what's he done? <laughs> <laughs> he is a man with an eye for details. An eye. Love him. <laughs> he is a man with an eye for details, and he has used that eye to do the unthinkable. But essentially what I did is I came up with an option where, do I have a battery? No, I've not got a battery. I've got no solar, no heat pump. Just tap the zero out there as well. Not got an EV charger. So as he increased the solar that was putting in here, it would adjust all my figures. What we generated solar would be how much it would export because I knew roughly because I've been on some websites for every kilo I added it basically multiplied it along there it comes down to all or nothing. This time it's most people just look at the bills but I realized when you're adding a battery what you need to know is, is not what we're spending in a month you need to know what you're doing per day
can't do it. Can't do it. It takes someone who is truly built different to spreadsheet the way Roger spreadsheets. And it's not for a lack of trying. I sheeted my little ass off. I sheeted in the office. I sh sh sheeted in the warm embrace of mother nature. But at the end of the day, sheeting ain't for everyone. You can't expect the average consumer to sheet on command. It's, it's actually very, very technical. And that's why user interfaces like the Enphase app are so important. All of the products that we sell come with portals that allow you to access the real-time, accurate metrics of your system. Enphase, Valent, Give Energy will give you access to the platforms that you can use to keep an eye on your consumption, uh, your export, and your production. So this is what I used just to give me some rough ideas of whether adding solar oh, was, 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 was worthwhile or not. And I spent it. I did it on my iPad. I did it on the computer. I personally find the interfaces on like the Enphase app to be slightly more understandable than um, Roger's spreadsheets. Sorry, Roger. But you know, I'm looking at Roger's spreadsheets and, and everything is there. And there's nothing saying you can't get super granular with your system and, and dig into every little bit there. And if you want to do that, we encourage it. And if there's something that you need from us, we'll sit you down and we can hash it out. Just like Liv has done here with Roger. So what I have to do every day, I have to add all these together and then subtract it from the total. Now, if I can get that in a CSV form, with this data, I can read this data. Those are the values of each of my uh, Enphase solar panels. Yep, they and are, that, yep. And that's and, your total. And that's the total. But what, what, what if I get my app out, I'll show you the Excel upstairs that I've got. I'm then writing every one of those values by hand into my, into my Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> on, on my Enphase, I can send, I can email myself reports daily, okay. but it, it's not, it's not the one I want. I can make that happen. I'm sure I can. Don't you worry, Roger. Don't you worry. You will get those CSV files. Your spreadsheet will be so automated. It'll be gaining sentience and grabbing the nuclear launch codes before you know it. So Roger's happy, Valent are chuffed, and our engineers are just finishing off a bit of exemplary work with the lagging. Lagging, I learned today, is when they wrap the pipes in a bit of foam. And it just looks, just looks lovely. Look at that. Can't get that anywhere else. That is just bloody beautiful. So it's been about a week since the install and um, I do think Ben is, uh, ben is getting off the plane any second now. You right? You right, Ben? Yeah, yeah, it was a good all day. Ah, oh. that was brilliant, no, ah, oh. ah, oh. ah. Oh. No, yeah, no, yeah, stop talking. Um, so basically, Roger's install finished, looks beautiful, we wanna go check on it, see how it's looking. What's that? Just got off the plane, still got your luggage, jet lagged. Haven't slept in 48 hours. Okay, well, I can do you a coffee and um, a pack of baby wipes that you can use to clean off your body. Get to the install. All right. Okay, so I'm back from the holiday, and to be honest, I'm probably not needed for this video because it's already been done, but I did want to come down and take a look at this air source heat pump and take a look at a system that's gone to net zero. As Roger made it out, net zero in his wallet as well, so we apologize for that, but we have got him off the grid. So let's take a look in the garage and have a look at the rest of this system. Right, we're going to start with the bits that I know everything about because I don't know that much about air source heat pumps. So we've got a Give Energy all-in-one. This has got the gateway on it, so it's the 6 kilowatt model um, and it's a 13.5 kilowatt hour storage cell. We've got N-phase microinverters, so the Envoy, the communication link, is in that box. Now we're on to the tricky bit for me, air source heat pump. So this has all been installed, it's been on for about four weeks now. Uh, we've got a unvented cylinder, we've got the buffer tank, we've got all this lovely insulated pipe work, and that's about as much as I know about it. Roger probably knows more than I do, but we'll go and take a look at the actual unit now as well. And this is the air source heat pump. So it's a Valen Aerotherm, seven kilowatt. That's about as much as I know about it. However, what Roger tells us about it is absolutely loves it. It's been super efficient. 
been achieving in S Corp of six, although it's summer, obviously we're gonna find out what it's gonna be like in winter. But as far as the install goes, we're super happy with it. It's a really high quality install. It looks great, it's very quiet and very low operational noise. It's odd, Roger said before, that in the house it's so quiet, all he can hear is the water moving around the pipes. So that's definitely a win for him. Now after this, we got to check out Roger's new data post install. We were quite excited to hear about what insights he gleaned in regards to his journey towards true net zero. Oh, cool. So when you were saying before, some people go for batteries, some people go for solar, yeah. I was playing around with the options of either. Okay. Because at one point I was looking at just a battery. Yeah. Because of what I had on That's the, very popular at the moment. Yeah. Because I had on the roof, but what made me look at the solar was because it, there was no VAT at the yeah. time. <laughs> and then I placed the order and bang, government says, oh, take VAT off that now. So you're plus 190. Yes. So that's really interesting. So you've been able to get the solar. So the solar's doing the generating. The battery's assisting the solar on the poor days. You charge your battery a little bit as well. Yeah. You've got some export payment on SEG, and then the whatever's not consumed by the heat pump goes out to the grid. Yeah. To summarise this now, how would you summarise like a net zero household? Like what would it take to get a net zero household? To get net zero, I think this is where you probably need all three. You need the battery, you need the solar, and the heat pump because your gas, if you don't have the heat pump, your gas, you're still gonna have a massive cost. Now, the only way to offset your gas is if you put a massive amount of solar on the roof, which then becomes- Your export payments pay for the gas. Yeah. So the heat pump's going great. It's operating at a S-COP6, which I've heard is amazing, but summer is the best time for heat pumps. It's no secret that heat pumps operate less efficiently during the winter. And so maybe we'll have to meet up with Roger again in the future see how that's going. But the most important aspect to me is making sure that you have the ecosystem ready for a heat pump, especially if you're trying to move towards net zero, if you're trying to be off grid, anything like that. Panels and batteries, they're gonna be essential to offset the consumption of that heat pump. Now, if you're not able to have a PV system, it's out of your price range, whatever, the heat pump is still an option, but you're definitely gonna to have to consider looking at some low cost energy tariffs from your supplier. All right, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. It was a really fun video to make, a bit of a different one. Um, but let us know if you want to see more like that in the future. If you want to see you know, more heat pump content, positives, negatives, or you know how you might get the best out of owning one as we start to move towards more sustainable, self-sufficient solutions in the future.